filming uses the go-go tape. <laughs> Why? Because you're a woman and you want my go-go tape. <laughs> So today, I'm going to take that air fuel ratio off and change the spool in the back of it so that I can adjust it down a little bit more and control the black smoke. And I bought me some new Mobius cameras. Uh, this is called a Mobius Maxi. Uh, amazing little camera. They've made a huge amount of improvements to it. Um, reason I don't have a GoPro is a GoPro is hundreds of dollars. That right there is about 90. So if I destroy them, I'm not out a lot of money. And I do go through cameras. I'm pretty hard on them. Okay. Let's see here. That's not going in here. Yeah. <coughs> I'm going to do the boost line over here. This is a hydraulic, air hydraulic operated air fuel ratio. You got a boost line and then it uses uh, engine oil. And the back of this has a valve spool and it hooks uh, directly into the rack to control it. Okay, not a lot of oil spillage. Oh, let me show you what's in there. You can see it or not. Okay, this is a breakdown of the air fuel ratio. Now, this is the older style. You remember I showed you the little teeny spring and how this spool hooked in right here. So, these have an O-ring in them to seal them to keep the oil from coming through the threads. And so it looks to me like they've modified them, done something different, so you don't have that with those other ones. And it just hooks in here. So this is a spool, and then this is the other spool, and this is what hooks into your rack and controls uh, the rack movement. So let's have a look-see at the rack. So this is where your rack's going to be. Um... Right here is how you adjust your rack and set it. And the air fuel ratio control comes in in a slot in the bottom here and slips up and attaches to this. And then this hooks into the governor assembly. And the governor assembly comes back. And right in here is where it clips into the rack. Um, this is a pretty simple system that Cat came up with. It does have some drawbacks. It has a piston in here that wears out, and then it likes to flutter. Uh, sounds like a Mac with camelback suspension on a rough road. It gets to barking, and it has a real small uh, needle bearing setup in here that the fingers of the governor run on, and it can wear holes in those. This is a screen assembly for the oil to go through and on up into the air fuel ratio. Okay, this is a front view of it, and this is where that uh, spool, uh, this is where it slides up into here, and then this is your uh, adjustment to set your rack. And then one of the bad things about these when they originally came out is they used a steel bearing in here, and it'd just eat into the shaft and wear things out. So these are the numbers for the newer style bearings. They last longer, but... These shafts used to be pretty hard, and they're not anymore. They're just really soft. I can't buy these from Cat anymore. Not because they, They're available. You can buy them, but they'll last maybe a month, and they'll just eat them to death. So what I do is I go up to Industrial Metal, and they got a good machinist up there, and he makes these out of 4140 for me and uh, does the splines and everything on them. Anyway... Uh, after that, they're just like the old original ones made back in the 70s. Really good, high-quality stuff. Now we got oil coming out everywhere. So this is the cover where you adjust it. So when you take these apart, there should be no oil in here. 
if you've got oil one or two things if if you've got oil in this that means you're pumping oil from your turbo as you can see since I've updated and put the switchblade on there she's clean as a whistle um, or the diaphragm could be broke and you're pumping oil, engine oil inside on the other side of the diaphragm but if you got a hole in the diaphragm you can also be putting boost inside the engine so if your diaphragm is completely broke you can lose a lot of boost into your engine you'll see crankcase pressure go up breather smoke all that so where's my half time to take this part ah, that's tight like tiger so this is this has never been a part I bought this as a complete assembly from Caterpillar oh wow that do that in the vice so somehow I got the wrong one and this was set up for a 657 probably early E model that had a mechanical 3408 in the back that's what they had in them 3412 in the front 3408 in the back um, the spool in the end here is longer on the 57 anyway I have right there in the yellow box the correct spool I basically bought everything to rebuild it, all the seals, the diaphragm, the whole shooting match. So you can't put this together wrong. You can't screw it up. Because you're probably asking, Jeff, how are you gonna put how are you gonna remember how to put that together? Now we checked. Everything inside this AFR is the same. 3408, D343, 1693, all the models this fits. Probably even goes on 3406. But we check part numbers. Nothing inside here is different than uh, the other one, other than this spool right here, which we're going to push out. And this is what's going to get changed, is this right here. And it has a seal on it. Anyway, so you got, you got a spring here and a spring on the front. Anyway, this spool, I'll show you. This spool right here runs inside of that one. And you've got oil passages. And I couldn't explain to you 100% how this actually operates. Hal could tell you. The guy I had here working on things. Oh great, that was a, so there's a little spring in there. See, this is different, wow, that's cool. So your, that spool fits inside there like that. Wow, that's okay. And that little spring went inside between there. <clears throat> hmm. Hmm. New to me. Little spring. See, pieces coming out I didn't even know existed. So it looks like there's probably a snap ring on here. No, yeah, no. What do we got here? No. This must just come out, pry out. We'll take the new one out and have a look, see how's that after I wash all the black off my hands. So here's the new one, here's the old one. There's a wee bit of difference there, Captain. Just a wee bit of difference. Alrighty, and then, so, here's the old diaphragm. I don't even think it has 2,000 hours on it yet. I could probably reuse it, but why? We've got a brand new one here, brand new diaphragm, uh, gaskets, that's the diaphragm for the whore. So our diaphragm is going to go on there, and if I remember correctly, you have a washer for that spring, I think. Wasn't that one, was it? 
<gasps> oh no, I've forgotten. What am I gonna do? Gif! Oh no! Alright, let's see if I can remember how it goes together. <laughs> this goes in here. Lucky this. Wham bam, thank you ma'am. This in. Bingo. That spring goes on the inside of there. Big fat one goes on the outside like that. Uh, this little teeny spring has to go inside of here. Springs on, centered, it's all good. And this is going to be inserted down the hole inside of here. Remember when I told you you couldn't screw this up? I think I could screw this up. I'm trying to remember. Shh, don't bother me. Okay, had to go double check. So it's the wide port on the bottom and then there's your oil supply right there. So the cover's gotta go on like that. So now let's install this, see if we can get it all back in there and operational. Make sure that goes in, works. Mm-hmm, yep, all right. So now I can put that on and the cover like a dish. Ah. Man, it's fun, ain't it? Look at that funness. More fun than a bag of hammers. All right, so there it is, assembled. And that diaphragm is gonna go in that groove and then it's also gonna get pushed into this housing. Yeah, that works. Why didn't you tell me about that now ago? I'm going to leave this tag on, even though it's the wrong number. I don't know why. I should probably take it off and throw it away and then write in the book that I uh, should probably get the correct number. I'm measuring here because this is where it'll grab the rack at. So this measures 970 and this one measures one inch and 46 thousandths. 76 thousandths shorter on this one. Apparently that makes a huge, huge difference. One of the things that about these hydraulic ones is in order for them to operate, you got to do one of two things. After it starts, you need to take this valve and push it in. It's called cocking it. You cock that. <laughs> so, sorry, that's what they call it, cocking it. So you, once you get it cocked, then that spool in there is in the operating position. If you shut it off and you lose your oil pressure, it comes back. Uh, and the only way to re-cock it is to build enough boost uh, to push that in and cock it again. So you can blow tons of black smoke with one of these type uh, air fuel ratios until it becomes operational. And the only way it's going to become operational is to apply a load to it and boost. So that's how you make them smoke. But after that, they should stop. Okay, so we're on. So the next step is fired up.
me explain how a retarder works on, on a scraper. That right there is the retarder cooler. And then that big cooler down in here is the transmission cooler. And the retarder uses transmission oil to operate. The retarders on these machines will suck up so much power, it's absolutely unbelievable. And that's why they take such huge oil coolers to cool that oil. So when you see me step on the gas on this and you see it takes so long to wind up and go, it's because that retarder, I've got it pulled 100% on. That's how it works and those are the size of the coolers it takes to dissipate all that heat. So I think I've got the smoke down to probably as almost as little as I can get it. One thing I noticed with the AFR control is a half a turn makes a huge difference. And so I might get down to turning it just a little bit at a time, see if I can cut down the smoke some more. But we'll do some more oil sampling and we'll see what the oil sample says. So the other day, oh, it's been a week ago, I ordered a serpentine belt drive for the Challenger so I can get going on that. Uh, that came out of Naples, Florida from uh, March Performance. And I was a little worried because of the hurricane that I might not get it, but it's gone out. Glad to hear that Florida got spared by that hurricane. Uh, hated to see you guys go through that. Anyway, that's on its way here. Supposed to be here the 10th. Today is the 5th. So five more days and I'll be putting a serpentine setup on the Challenger. <laughs>